further ado, let's please have the second speaker from proposition side, uh, Bonita. Um, okay, let me set up my timer on my phone right here. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm just going to put my video on. I hope that's okay. Um, I will start in three, two, one. To reject or to accept, to be vaccinated or not, what do we want? Well, as proposition, obviously, we want to criminalize these people that refuse to be vaccinated. Before I begin on with my case, I'm going to start with a few forms of rebuttal, and then I will show you why in the presence of other alternatives we have taken today's debate. So the precurrent speaker brings about this argument of how it is unethical and it encroaches on people's human rights. But our first speaker even brought about the point of like, you know, the social contract theory. But for, for opposition to understand this even better, government has the right to act on a certain topic if an individual has refused to be vaccinated. And why is this? Because this individual poses a harm to other individuals and and to themselves because in doing so this government has the right to criminalize those who deny these vaccinations our first speaker told you this she told you that she told you how government has provided this important information and how these people have been educated on the workability on that on this vaccine but here comes the precurrent speaker in talking about how it is ineffective. It's actually really funny when he talks about how the government has failed in educating these different people. But the purpose of education is for these different individuals to learn different things about all these types of vaccines or all these types of COVID mutants, right? The truth of the matter is that the virus is mutating. This is something that we have to agree. Opposition cannot tell us that in someone refusing to get a vaccine, that they will be miraculously healed. And also, developing countries do not have access to these vaccines, hence they are in a position to deny or do so otherwise. We are willing to trade off individual autonomy where these choices endanger the lives through increased spread of COVID-19. So it actually makes sense when we tell you that we want to criminalize those who refuse this vaccine. Allow me to ask and bring up the answers for this debate. We have two questions, panel. Number one, why do we feel it's necessary for this to happen? And number two, what happens if we do not criminalize vaccine denial? Firstly, different homo sapiens of this earth that have been dying all around the world have this new way of protecting themselves against the coronavirus. While opposition might bring the argument of human rights, human rights are not going to stop a particular person from falling ill and catching this disease when they could have had this vaccination. We feel that the deaths that are inevitable in both worlds can be reduced drastically on our side. Meaning what? That these different human beings that contribute to these different economic systems would be able to even upgrade their systems. We all know that in the beginning times of like this pandemic, most, of, most countries had their economic systems drop very drastically. But we feel that even with the fact that people are going to get, you know what, vaccinated, that means that more people are going to be able to go to their workplaces. And that means the economy of these different countries will rise even in this hard time. One thing that we also have to know is that safety, safety is very important for all these different human beings. And we see that it is something that is, you know, very little in opposition's work. A truth that we have to face is the personal losses that we have faced in this experience. One, kill, one can't help but wonder, let's say if my mother, if my mother got the vaccine, would she still be here? Well, no worries for you because as proposition, we tell you that these questions would be answered. Why? Because this person would have gotten the vaccine and let's say if they were to die or to go to heaven, then your question would be answered, right? Second question, what happens if we do not criminalize vaccine denial? First of all, high rates of death 
of, that, of these certain individuals. And while death is something that is inevitable, we feel like the process is quickened very fast on the side of, you know, opposition. And with more people dying, how does it affect the very society that people are living in? Well, this is very obvious why, because, you know, a large sum of people dying means that your country's economy is going to plunge. But getting a picturesque view of this would even mean that an economy that has drastically plunged, that means that these different people would, let's say, either taxes would be increased during that time period or so forth and so on. But proposition has to show us even their denial, people are going to be still safe and protected, which is something that none of us see happening with the fact that they're trying to promote vaccine denial. We feel that it is mandatory and everyone should be vaccinated in order to stop the spread of, you know, corona. But moving on, let's paint worlds, right? Like the artists that we are, let's actually get a canvas, a paintbrush and paint. And let us paint the different worlds that all of us is giving you. Let's start with the negative world, right? What do we see in this world? We see that people are being able to make their own choice, but in the end, we see that their choice would either lead to their death or the deaths of others. How do the people in this world look like, panel? This means that more people are going to die, more sorrow, more sadness. You know, the whole package that comes with death and someone dying, you know, of corona. You understand how that picture looks like in your head, right? Because most of us have been through that phase when we have lost someone that we love. Now, come over to our side you know, still with the canvas and the paintbrush and everything else. In our world, we see that these different people that are being protected because of, you know what, this vaccine are having a better life, meaning that there's more chances of safety and less things to worry about in terms of COVID-19, which is something that, you know what, opposition cannot provide in today's debate. Today's debate being on the topic of criminalizing vaccine denial is also speaking on the terms of society right now. What would people do if, you know, someone refused to get vaccinated? That is a question that we have to ask ourselves. But seeing how far we have come as individuals and survivors of, you know, this ongoing pandemic, we feel that it is very, very correct and very good for anyone to be vaccinated. And there should be no such thing as denial. Whether we are encroaching on people's rights, we feel like the government has the mandate to say, you know what, just because you don't want this vaccine, you have to get it to keep others safe. And it is on those grounds that we are very proud to propose. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you very much for your speech. Uh, judges, please be.